Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Houston Housewives of Finance. For more information on increasing your cash flow, becoming your own money manager, and to schedule your complimentary personal finance strategy, contact the Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at the sphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit KOGpassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. Hey, welcome back to Intermission. I'm your host, Howard, and I've got two special guests for you today. i got crazy-ass Marcus. I don't know what that was. You can catch me at Howard Jerome on Facebook and Howard underscore Jerome on Instagram. By the way, just so you guys know, this will be our new day and time. Wednesday's at 7-ish. Today is a little late. We're just That's checking this like out. 7 -ish. So we got Marcus to my left. Marcus Griffin over at Fish and Grits. How's it going? <laughs> Gun, gun. That's why we need some sound effects. Bro, how much coffee did you drink today? None. I don't like coffee, man. It didn't even hype me up, honestly. You don't need it. It's and disgusting. Then, and then we got that. That's, that's, that's that asshole. And then we've got Bert to my right, Abner Brown. Very special guest of the show. Unlike Marcus, who's starting to wear out his welcome. Dang, man. That's all good. <laughs> Get yeah. rid of me then. I go back to fishing grits. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. So wow. we uh actually, while we were sitting here, we we're trying to figure out what we're going to discuss with you guys. I wanted to pit these two together and then only to find out that they have the same interests. So that makes it unfair for me. Like my <laughs> I need Jarvis back so that way we can team yeah. up against you guys because y'all have poor taste. Yeah. But Whatever. Poor taste in what? Not everything. Not Says the man well, we're going to find out. Rock. We're going to find out because we found out that Joaquin Phoenix is going to be playing Joker. And I'm curious to know what you guys think about this and who y'all's favorite Jokers. We kind of talked about this last week for a minute, but... I didn't expect Joaquin Phoenix to be playing the Joker as well, so... Yeah, that's a new one on me. Um, of course, my favorite is Heath Ledger. I don't know how you could get around not saying Heath Ledger is your favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wish we could have seen more of Jared Leto just to see what his Joker was going to be like. Um, Supposedly yeah. he's coming back. Yeah, they but he's coming back. For, but I mean, uh, if, if you got Joaquin Phoenix, you know, as as a Joker, that's and this is going to be an origin movie, right? See, and that's the strange part because they not they haven't really gave any information. They said that this still exists. I think they were talking about DC wants to go the route of not everything is connected like how Marvel is. So mm -hmm. you'll have your one offs like a Joker movie, but still in the the, the totality of it, they still may have. He'd weed with Jerry Leto's Joker or whatnot. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see. I mean, but see, that's I think that's one of the things that make Marvel movies work. Now, you know, I, I, my favorite comic book character of all time is Batman. But always, um, the thing about Marvel is they've interweaved everything. So, like, if you watch Iron Man one. You're already hooked into the story leading all the way up to Infinity War. Mm -hmm. You have more impact. And you have to watch everything in order to kind of, even the, the latest Ant Man movie that come out, you know, they weren't immune to the Thanos snap. Yeah, so, but see, here's the thing, though, you know. and there's two things with that. One, we've already seen DC try to interweave their characters, but we they've done it too early with having Justice League. Before we had an Avengers movie with MCU, it was what eight movies before yeah so we we fell into the storyline and he got bought in dc did it way too early so they've already that train's already left they're not gonna be able to do that plus we've already seen 
that kind of setup. So I think them trying to do these standalone movies and just leaving it in those own universes probably help them out at this point because they need to recover and these standalone movies do better. The thing that sticks out to me though is that they're not getting rid of Jared Little as Joker. Mm-mm. And they're having Joaquin Phoenix play Joker And that's well. what's bothering me the most. And that doesn't make sense. It, it bothers because I tell you, they're, they're, they're no, roughly the same I age. You, DC them exec smoking that good stuff. I told yeah, you it's got to be. It's got to be. I don't know what this is. But the interesting thing is though is that I can see Joaquin playing a better like traditional Joker. He'll give because you your crazy. He'll give you your Heath Ledger type of Joker more than uh Jared Leto did. See, I'm thinking more yeah. like, a, like closer to like he he Ledger he Ledger maybe but more like Mark if Mark Hamill were to play it on screen. That's that's honestly oh, what yeah, I'm that would be yeah. that would be nice cuz mm-hmm. he was good in her and you know he's good in extra in her and yeah. he's got this and new movie called The Sister Brothers that's coming out and he's maniacal in that. And that's the thing is that he actually has that maniacal edge to him with his all- So if you compare him like to Jared Leto, all right? Jared Leto was seen as doing all these crazy antics on set, but they just came off of kind of douchey. You yeah, know, and a little bit like yeah. he was overdoing it. Joaquin Phoenix for the long for a whole year trolled everyone. Yeah, everybody thought he was going psycho right. And yeah, he was trying to be a rapper, and then all of a sudden was like homeless for a little while. So he already does these kind of like yeah, real and, life and, and, and portrayals I, of I, things. It's kinda I guess what I'm getting at is I would rather see uh, Joaquin Phoenix just be the Joker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just Going have forward. just have one Joker. Mm-hmm. You don't need like two. What know. I think is interesting because we talked about this earlier, and I kept bringing this up about it being the anniversary of uh, ten years since The Dark Knight came out today. Mm-hmm. But on top of that, it's R. also Jared, been uh, how about Jared Leto? <laughs> oh, so. R. R. P. R. P. Heath Ledger. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great performance because we saw that movie. And then also on the other uh, spectrum of it, it's the ten year anniversary this year of when Marvel got it popping off with Iron Man. You remember we went to mm-hmm. go see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's crazy to look how how great both of those movies are. I mean, were. And how Iron Man kind of catapult what Marvel is, and it's like the Dark Knight kind of hand, handicapped the DC universe. They couldn't; mm. they, they've been trying to yeah. tap that greatness of that film and been failing every time. Because well, the problem is, is that they have the elements that they're trying to squeeze, and they're making trying to make a Marvel formula fit into to the DC their, to the series. DCU while like still it. trying to capture the magic that was the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can't do that because the types of movies are completely different. Exactly. Man of Steel was good. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that's about, mm. yeah if they would have continued down that vein, but the other thing too is it's still a one character movie. Yeah. Wonder Woman, we need that. solid movie. Yeah, one Aquaman, character. and we'll talk a little bit more about that oh, later. Yeah. But see, so too, far, with Marvel, okay. Marvel is about to, the people, those who know and pay attention, they know what's coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the casual viewer doesn't realize that uh, you've got an entire change coming up in the Marvel Universe. The, the Avengers that you know are no longer going to be the same. They're going to change out uh, members of the Avengers. You know, we got Captain Marvel coming in. Mm-hmm. We don't know anything about her. You know, if you're a casual viewer. Now, if you're in the comic books, you know all about Mar- Captain mm-hmm. Marvel. You mm-hmm. know about uh, Adam Warlock. You know about all of them. That's the one where they, they glimpsed it for a minute. But the one thing, though, going back to this thing about uh, Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker is that if you look at, like, DC Comics, it's the only way I can see this working. Like, all right, so let's say they give, in the same way they did Dark Knight, how it's not necessarily tied to the DCEU. Mm-hmm. If they did something like that, it was just giving a story on Joker. Okay, fine, that can work. It's not done to be a part of it. But the thing that I think has been crippling for DC, at least from my understanding of DC Comics and what I've experienced, I'm not by any means like a super comic book guy, but you don't have as many team-ups throughout DC comic books as you do in Marvel comics. Right. But yeah, you got the Justice League, mm-hmm. but even then, though, they still did their own thing. It wasn't like, we're all going to go stop this guy every single time. They more so mm-hmm. teamed up against like the League of Evil, what are they called, the, uh, with Lex Luthor, and they had... Uh, the um, Legion of Doom? Yeah, the Legion of Doom. Yeah. But, I mean... So well, they're going to have their chance problem. once they finally introduce Darkseid. Mm-hmm. You know, they'll, they'll have Listen, their chance. I truly under, I, I'm, I'm going to always say this. You watch the DC animated uh, universe that they have popping on right now, mm-hmm. they should have followed it like that. Because Mar- if you look at Marvel's formula, because a lot of their movies, like Iron Man, Doctor Strange, The Avengers, all of that was kind of loosely based on the Lionsgate property of the animated 
movies that they had out. And it's like it they had a test run. It's like, okay, I'm going to see how this is. Right. So DC kind of threw out these movies, and I mean, it been pretty good how yeah. Just Lee kind of came together in that sense, and then everybody has their little solo films. That would be more interesting. But, so, you know, they ain't going to do that. You know yours, Best Joker. Who do you think is going to do a better action between Joaquin Phoenix and Jared Leto? Ah, oh, man, Joaquin. Joaquin. Man. Joaquin. Right there is, man. Are you not to entertain? Well, even though that wasn't him, but yeah, my movie, <laughs> totally. Were, yeah, he was. He was the one being talked to. Yeah, he yeah. was the one being talked to. But that's still my man. Ever since I heard, I saw. No, her, actually, yeah. actually, when I saw him in Eight Millimeter, that movie still. That's that boxing movie. No, no, that was the one where. Um, Is Nicholas Cage in that? Nick Cage and he was a uh, private de- in the detective. Swamp? No, they. Shit, man! What, I'm trying to think. They of would movie. the 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 his client was an old lady. Her husband died, and they were filthy rich. But she found a snuff film that he had, and she was trying to mm-hmm. find out was it real. Mm-hmm. And Nick Cage went down the rabbit hole and realized it was very real. But Joaquin Phoenix was in there, yeah. and he had some memorable parts in there. Yeah. And he had, I remember one line in particular. He said, "You know, you dance with the devil. The devil don't change. He changes you. Mm-hmm. You know." And but that I, every time I see that movie, I I Ooh. feel like I need to go take that's a shower very after that because it's one of my favorite lines, and that's actually ironically from the old Joker from um, Jack Nicholson. Like, oh, have you, you ever danced, danced with the, the devil, devil in a pale moonlight? Like, yeah. yeah. Ooh, Joaquin, bro, you take <laughs> me back to the first time I fun. seen the Joker on screen. Yeah, yeah. but for real. Well, hold on, we're yeah. get into that because I know you hated that one, but. Before we go on any further, we got to shout out our sponsors, uh, Houston Housewives of Finance. Did you know that only four states in the United States offer financial education? 33% or more than 77 million Americans don't pay their bills on time. 39% of Americans carry credit card debt from month to month. And 39% of adults say they don't have enough savings. Don't become one of these statistics. Let Houston Housewives of Finance advise you on increasing your cash flow and becoming your own money manager by scheduling your complimentary personal finance strategy. Contact Houston Housewives of Finance today at 1-844-700-4463 or email us at info at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. Ask how you can participate in a complimentary financial literacy workshop near you. Houston Housewives of Finance are the new faces of the new age of financial services. That one is long. (laughs) (laughs) Get that paper, Okay, so we've been talking about best joker. He doesn't like Jack Nicholson. I didn't really particularly care for him either. Because it was corny. Cause it was, corny. It was I mean, really for time, corny. For the time, it was like, but I understand. following up Pow and Kazam and all that Man, crap. Are you Dude. serious? When he's, when he's like jumping Dude. on his one foot painting the... the yeah. That shit was hilarious. Oh my gosh, God. It's Bro, so corny. You go from Jack Nicholson... Prince, Nichol- Prince did the whole soundtrack. But that's still... I mean... You was, go from Jack Nicholson Heath. to Heath Ledger. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I saw Heath Ledger and I kind of was scared of the dude yeah, he, really, <laughs> he was, especially he's like scene, he, he was just that psycho and i like yeah he always pushed the envelope of you never understood why he kind of truth be told that was him, dark him, him and him and aaron eckhart man i always like to give some love to aaron eckhart in that movie because he, yeah. he really he really sold you on the turn of being good and bad and joking yeah sold you on the, the 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 craziness of like how you can be pushed to the edge mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. You see the thing always, though is that they with uh um, Bruce, uh, I keep wanting to say Bruce Willis. Jack, Jack Nicholson's Nicholson. Joker, though, it's very comedic and very like it's like it's the very, old, it's very much like a comic. Though. But it's like the old one but when it, it first came out with Batman with uh, Adam West. It was just like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, but actually, it it, though, it, it fits because it was another. a Tim Burton movie. Yeah, yeah, it fit what he wanted. You know, you couldn't do ludicrous. that Joker with mm-hmm. with. It was like, Hey, with Jonathan hey, Nolan, you weren't gonna do that. I love that just goes like, to show hey, you the, like, how powerful like, the, Nolan, the right. Ledger Joker was because honestly, like he's a newer iteration of the Joker, and he put a dark spin on it. And we still use that word now as what the gold standard. The, is the gold standard Joker. of acting for a villain, yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know about for a villain though. Dog, it's just like if you look at it, everybody's been comparing. Everybody's been trying to get that Marvel. Angry. But you're just talking about comic book villains. I'm just talking about just the way he was able to walk that fine line of I think this is a comic book thing, but it's like this can really be taken kind of seriously. See, I yeah. think he took you out of it. I think every, the, everybody's comparison between Killmonger and Heath Ledger's Joker. You can compare those two, though. You know, no, to a certain you extent, you could, but I mean, so what, you can only you go so far. I've heard this before, and I haven't agreed with any point of anyone saying that they're. You can compare the two. I like I like Killmonger, but I feel like the way that 
Batman, okay, so you've seen Batman Begins. It was a Batman-centric movie. So then mm-hmm. you, from there you can, like, okay, I can focus on other aspects. And focus, they, it was more of a Joker movie, and it was well, yeah, a feature of Batman. Yeah, he stole but the Killmonger show, sure. was kind of the extra steal because they kind of focused on other things going yeah. on, like the women and then Wakanda, then Black Panther. They, if you give him more of an arc or you gave him more screen time, I think it might be what See, been. Yeah, he for sure. Been. I think Killmonger definitely would have had the setup to be able to steal a show the same way Joker did. True. But my problem with Killmonger that you that doesn't happen with Heath Ledger's Joker is that one of the things I mentioned about Killmonger is that he's a master strategist and all this shit, but then his strategy falls apart super easy. It's like, mm-hmm. why is it the route that you're going through? Mm-hmm. Joker, on the other hand, makes you think he has no strategy yeah, and no plan yeah. because it just seems yeah. like it's random until it's about to happen. And you're like, oh shit, this dude's been playing this like, out from the very nothing's beginning. Nothing's yeah. more iconic than Man, him burning that money slow. and deciding yeah. that. I was like, what? Well, no, 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 no even better than... the hospital. No, oh, yeah, no, even better than, better than that. The, 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 when they're getting into the safe in the beginning of the movie, and he said, well... They told me to shoot the uh, bus, bus driver. driver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. But it's like just like little small details like that that I think are is going to be, and I think that actually set it up for failure for every Joker behind that. Minus Joaquin, me, I think he's going to do a good job. But Heath Ledger had, and I can't even think of a movie I liked Heath Ledger in before that. But I mean, maybe these little that, details. Uh, what's that one from Back Mountain? Uh, I know yeah, that's your movie. Me. Brokeback Mountain, that's what he's going to say. Oh. Brokeback Mountain. No, I remember What's the one where he was... Uh, uh, the gay cowboy movie? I yeah. No, I remember there was the one where he was a knight or something. Oh, Knight's Tale. Yeah, Knight's Tale, yeah. Because nice that's, yeah. that's when uh, Paul Benny was there. Mr. Yeah. Vision himself. The only yeah. movie I ever, in, I ever saw him in that I thought was okay because he didn't really say much was... The Brothers Grimm, he was okay in that movie. 40 things I hear about you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. that yeah. movie. Yeah. He was good in that. Yeah, he was. But he didn't have much screen time. And after that, there was nothing else really. I think he always, was always a B-list actor. actor. But then movies. he went wild in this one. Like, we really got to see his range in this. And I was like, but it's like the little details, like just, oh, like the little, same way that John, uh, James Hart, I mean, not James Hart, my bad, um, Tom, Tom, Tom Hardy tried to uh, incorporate Bane. these little ad-libs into Bane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that was his the eyes. thing. That was, that's what... Tom Hardy's best thing because his uh, eye yeah, movement yeah. was just like that's all you saw and I was like hey, that's all yeah. right. but even look if you look at it, right before he blew up the stadium he's like oh what a lovely singing voice yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one yeah. of the best lines in the movie I would go back lovely, and rewatch it yeah. <laughs> and then boom yeah. so it was like those elements influenced that movie you can see that with Heath Ledger and that's one thing I think that no one else has done really is bring up like bring a character to it like an actual Nobody personality to it that, nope. I think Mark Hamill would be great at that Man, on screen. I, I would love to see him actually on screen. See? When you hear the Joker's voice in your head, which w- what voice pops oh, into your Oh, Mark head? Hamill. It's Mark Hamill's because he has the exactly. voice, but he doesn't yeah. mean he's, he's on. So he sucks as Luke Cage. I don't care. I mean, not Luke Cage. Um, Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Personally, I, those are that's one day we're gonna talk about the most overrated movies. We're Star Wars. Though, we're right? gonna talk about that, especially the new ones. I think the the lore of Star Wars is better than the movies. It is, but that's that's the thing though. I mean, it's the story in all all movies back in that era, it, on the way up to like, I guess like right at the eighties and shit, all relied on storytelling. Yeah, didn't have anything yeah. else, and 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 in elaborate made sets but well even the, back then the sets weren't really i mean they were ahead of their time for then but exactly. i mean if you were to make the first three star wars movies now nobody go see them because just like every, no and it really rely it depends on the audience the audience back then we weren't into action and backstories sci-fi. we weren't into well what about this little plot twist or we weren't into that we just wanted to mm. see the movie mm. And see, and that's part of what I think is... That's the reason why you've got, like, you four or five death, movies though. now outside of the trilogy that's trying to explain how they blew up the Death Star in the mm-hmm. first place. Well, it's because we, we understand now that, like, yo, these are definitely plot holes. Like you said, we weren't concerned with those details. Yeah, but we didn't like, care about cool. that then. But the problem, though, that these movies... The reason why I think it's, like, you have to look at them as not... They're great for their time, but comparatively, they're not... I wouldn't mm-hmm. consider them, like, greatest movies of all time because they didn't age well. They didn't age well. And yeah. I think, like, for instance, like... Dark Knight, I think that's movie movie is going to age well. Yeah. well. Like I can still like, look at that today. Blade, yeah. Blade Runner, Blade Runner, Blade Runner, Runner yeah, got better as it aged. Yeah, 
The Lord of the Rings still ages well, man. Just the Which story. Which is also why I don't yeah. think Harry Potter's going to age well. Oh, man. No. Every time I, I that first one. Oh, every time God. I go back and look at them as much as I like Harry Potter, every time I go back and look at them, I'm like, man, I don't like to watch these movies. <laughs> I like yeah. number five. Number five was interesting. Yeah, but you could, like you said, basketball. Lord of the Rings, you can watch that all the time. That movie, man. It just, the yeah. story. I just like movies with good storytelling. And yeah. Movies, and that's what all movies I got about. a question for you, though. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we've been talking about the Joker. Best Batman. Uh, Bruce Wayne, Wayne or, or Batman or both? Well, whoever pulled off both the best. best the best, okay, this is what I'm going to say. Mm. The best Batman acting will have to be, I give it to Christian Bale, but I, the best portrayal of what I think Batman should look like should be Ben Affleck. I, the, yeah. The, the yeah. side, that one scene in, uh, 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 what's that, Dawn of Justice, when he's like jumping out, when he's go fight all the goons at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. I was like, dang, that was just like, that was glory. I mean, he's like throwing mm-hmm. batarangs yeah. in people's arms and he's like choke slamming people. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that is I, Batman. You I know what? I, I, I used to like. Man. I used to like Christian Bale as Batman, but ba- Ben Affleck to me is best. Bruce Wayne, best he looks Batman. Wild. And he's all big. And and he's well, he, I would pick him over he Christian looks, Bale. He looks like Batman should look. He's been doing it for a while. Mm-hmm. He's tired. Mm-hmm. He he wants out, but he can't do that. You know, that's all he knows. Yeah. You know, uh, and he's human. <laughs> yeah. You know, I oh, mean, yeah, remember he when he got knocked? Broken? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when he <laughs> got his ribs right. broken. Yeah, you know. Oh. <laughs> And then they just green. They just said that uh, the penguin is going to be on the new Batman movie. Hold that thought, because I'm curious about this. We're about to peace out to Facebook Live now. Get you guys say here. bye. Peace. Uh, Get out of here. As always, go and like us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, our the Sphere TV. Go up there, check out some of our other shows. Share this if you liked what you saw, and uh, subscribe to us on every major platform: iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher. Leave us a review. Let us know what you think. If you guys want. Uh, anything specific talked about, drop us a line. Let us know what kind of content you guys want to hear about. Um, and, of course, go and donate. Uh, you can make a yeah, one-time donate. <laughs> you, you can take a one-time donation, or you can actually uh, subscribe to us on Patreon and give us that monthly subscription. Uh, but, as always, you guys, go ahead and plug y'all's social media on there. Oh, yeah, Fish and Grits 281. You know what we do it for the culture. Let them know they can find you, Bert. They can find me wherever these guys are. <laughs> Hell, yeah. <laughs> you can cool. find me. Fish and grits. Oh, oh my God. All the culture. So we'll be dropping the rest of the show later on this week. Check us out so you guys can hear all the interesting topics that we're going to be talking about. And always, we'll catch you next week. Peace. See you. So, uh, yeah, Batman. Yeah, man. um, Penguin. That's going to be awesome. That's what you were saying. Okay, so (laughs) who would y'all want to see as the penguin? Danny that's DeVito. <laughs> I, see, I, don't Again. Want, I don't want. See, this thing about he played it is, the first one, right? Yeah, but he was yeah. so weird and just, he I was. Know, he I, was. I want. I want a penguin that can kind of. I like the dude from Gotham. Oh yeah, I do like that him. I do like yeah. the trail. Uh, but I want a penguin that's like a. I don't know if you ever seen a uh, little midget man. Oh, you talking about uh from Tyrion. Uh, from Tyrion? Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. could be a good. But I don't yeah. want him to be a midget. I want to be him like a regular. Like he's not a just. Small dude, you don't have to. But make they him. put him on Thor as like not a midget, but he was still. Oh, he was no, still a midget. I want him to he be was a, a giant midget. Man. <laughs> yeah. I want Penguin to be a crime boss. Like Philip C- Seymour Hoffman was my always my fantasy pick of to play. Him. But I want him to be a crime boss. So him be like, one, a, yeah. like if you ever seen the Batman, the cartoon uh, mm-hmm. that came out like oh five or something like that. The Penguin in that iteration had like side, like he had like guards, like these. Asian ladies that was guards for him. I was like, I need that type of pink. Yeah. He, he doesn't do the fight. But who who do you get to pick, play him? Man, that's ooh, that's. So you would need somebody who's awkward. Someone, who, yo, oh boy, who played Lex Luthor could play him. Jesse Eisenberg. Mm-hmm. No, if he toned I don't like him in anything. Actually, no, he'd make a good Riddler though. I don't like him in anything. But I need him to be a crime. I'd boss. get the dude from from Gotham to play the Riddler. It would be awesome. He yeah, would be awesome. on there. Uh, hell, I can't even tell you. But I would get I don't him. Know his name. Yeah. The, see the guy. Who That's the thing on about it, though, is on Gotham they cast those characters so perfectly. Mm-hmm. They, that's you know? one thing for sure. And I'm not gonna lie, like Alfred, that's, I, I, the guy that that plays. Yeah, wait a minute, that Alfred I think is one of the best Alfreds. <gasps> okay, so I do have a I do have a person in mind that should play uh, 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 Penguin. The dude that plays Beast 
on the oh, X-Men movie. Kelsey Grammer. No, not him. Oh, the him. Oh, the, the young glad- dude. Okay, yeah. Oh, he would be awesome. Nah. What? Nah. Are you see- no. He's a good actor to me. He can't play yeah, a villain. Yeah, he's a good actor. I don't he know if he'd play that. Villain. I don't think he played Vin. No. Oh, well. well he could. I've seen him in something else, too, that I don't... That I'll think of somebody. I think he's too soft. Like, because the pink one has suffers from the same thing the Joker does. Like, he has to be able to sell you on his delusion. You know what? I, I can't wait to see. Glass. The new M. Night Shyamalan movie. Oh yeah, I'm looking... In, I'm interested in that. It, it, it's... Um, the follow up to uh, Unbreakable yeah, yeah. and well, he doesn't know any he's never seen The Sixth Sense or um, Signs I haven't seen, Sixth Sense. I haven't seen well you, you don't have Signs. to uh, you just need I'm to see Unbreakable and I've the other split. one uh, Split if you've, you've seen Split and Unbreakable then because yeah. that's part of the trilogy I'm worried about Glass really well because I'm not Shyamalan he's been on a roll but now I, d- I don't think he's going to mess up Glass he can mess up a lot of the other ones he's done Glass is w- one that's going to be that like... Yeah, did. That was really good. I think he actually did an episode of Black Mirror. Did he? I think so. I think that was the first thing I did. Or it might have been... It, it was a Netflix show that he had done that he was on. You know who... You know what? Now I'm thinking about this. Hear me out. He's eight, He's older now. You haven't seen him in a movie in a while. Wouldn't Matthew McConaughey would just be nice for some type of role? Uh, What kind of role are you going to put him in? I just want him to be... Like the Riddler or something, just something mm-hmm. out of his comfort yeah, he, zone. Yeah, he he's got to be like something more than a Riddler. But that's what I'm saying. He could pull off like a, 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 a he may could pull off a, a oh maybe Woody Harrelson that would be nice. I oh like Woody yeah, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson would be just man. I would love I would love Woody and because he's he, he he knows how to have that. I would have Woody side. Harrelson as, as he can, a penguin. He can vibe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was thinking I that, him as but, a but think about him. So the penguin had to come off as a well, suave dude. That looks like a, you can't trust him. But he's that not looks suave like, though. But he's yes, not you, in the comic books. He, if you if you look no, at no, him, well, Woody Harrelson. You Woody Harrelson never plays a suave guy. Right? He's always yeah, kind of always grungy. a blunt instrument. His uh, even like in Planet of the Apes, where I think is one of his best roles, and he played something more serious where it didn't have the good. Well, I think it's one of his best roles. His best you've, role. You've, you've never seen Seven Psychopaths. He's good in that one too. His best role is always going to be True Detective. Mad dude, man. You watched it, man. I don't like. I don't like some cop shows. Yeah, he did. But the thing is, like who? I don't like cop shows. It's not even a it's cop not even show. Cop it's show. Not even it's cop show. Like, it's like, man, it's some serious. It's got a detective in the name. I was like, whatever, man. It's, it's some no. serious. Like, yeah. But look, hear me out, though. So, serious role. Like, I, when I saw him in that, this is the first time I've ever seen him play, like, a, a true villain. Oh, he was great in that movie. He needs to play more villains. Especially when for he can. sure. There was no com- there was no comedy to it. Everything he usually does has some kind of, like, comedic no. edge. Who? Woody Harrelson. He's played some... He's played some movies where he was a. Man, let me see. Seven Psychopaths. He was a a, a, a damn uh, mob boss, and every time oh, he tried yeah. to kill somebody, his gun would fucking jam. He'd throw it off. You look at um, three billboards. No? Three billboards. Yeah, he. W- Did you not hear that letter he wrote yeah, he about a, his yeah. suicide? Oh, hilarious! No country for old men. Yeah, I don't remember him in No Country for Old Men. You said what? I don't remember him in that. Oh, he was awesome. Oh yeah. Um. What's that movie in the '90s with him, Robert Downey Jr. with Oh. Um, Natural born killers. Natural born killers. <laughs> Fucking comedy. Oh yeah. Comedy. Dark Similar comedy, bro. but comedy. <laughs> Dark comedy. The majority of his movies have some kind of comedic edge to them. Man, so to see him really playing a stuff. villain though, but he seems to be playing a serious villain. I think you'd kill it as penguin. You, yeah. Uh oh. I don't know about a villain. I don't uh, know about I'll him. kill it. He'll kill it as a villain. He could take that role in. Any I keep it in my head thinking Two Face for some reason. He'd be a, a bomb Two Face. I think he'd, I think he'd be better for Two Face. But man, Aaron Eckhart, man, that dude's at the bar, dog. I'd I love his portrayal as yeah. Two Face. He was great. He shocked me. He kind of towards the end, he kind of got kind of cheesy, like but towards the end of the movie. And it, that, but he script. he seeing him go from this dude who's obsessed with being justice on justice to see it get twisted by the Joker. Joker mm-hmm. was that shit was that dope. was genius. Man. You can literally see him twisting and contorting and you can see him change it. Why? And it's mm-hmm. crazy you don't see that in movies as it, it has over series man. of movies, but yeah. it's crazy. Because most times they want to rely on like effects and things like that. But that movie was seriously just about character development and seeing that twist because even if you look at like Chris and Bale like he does a lot of twisted characters like the machinist oh, yeah. he got down to like 90 pounds oh loved it remember uh American Psycho American Psycho that's one awesome. of my favorite that my business was card <laughs> now is actually styled after the ones I on love American oh really yeah. I paused it that's still one of my favorite movies and copied it wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this is perfect 310 the Human is one of my favorite ones for me. yeah you see him in what was he in the illusionist yeah. Oh, the prestige. The, you mean the prestige? prestige yeah. Is, uh, the prestige was a good movie. That was a good. That was a good. Uh, that was his. 
his uh, tryout for yeah, Batman. Lucius is Edward yeah. Norton. Logan was also in. Was hey, Edward Norton girl. would be a good, a nice uh, something in Batman. He could play Penguin. I like Edward Norton. I, I think that dude is, is gold. He doesn't get in a role because he's because crazy. he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He could be a Penguin though. Damn, he best hold. Still better than Ruffalo. Yeah, for sure. What else we talking about? I forgot. Penguin. Who would play a good Penguin? I can't think of nobody else. I'm t- I think Edward Norton would do it. I was surprised you didn't say The Rock. <laughs> no, no, he wouldn't play Bane. He would be yeah. Bane. He could play Bane. Oh, you know what? He'll be a good uh 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 the shark uh, uh what's his name? Uh, that hunter guy that was on there. Or that might be Marvel actually. That's, that's Marvel. That's Spider-Man. No, the one with the lion thing on him? Spider-Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Craven. Yeah, yeah. yeah Craven. he should play the uh the crocodile on that be on Batman. He'd be nice on that. Yeah. Kevin Hart is Penguin. Oh, God. <laughs> no. Oh, that would be funny. Be funny. I think yeah. Kevin Hart needs to take a vacation. Yeah, he needs to take a break. Yeah. You see that him and uh, Mike Epps are beefing? Yeah. That's just Because <laughs> Mike Epps is keeping it. He's like, I just don't think you're funny, and it's okay. Bro, I don't really think Mike Epps is that funny either, though. He's got oh, some man. horror movie. He's terrible. That shit was Whatever. awful. He's, he's, a, he's, like, annoying funny. Mike Epps is that guy that he needs a funny lead in front of him mm-hmm. and he can bounce off him if he, if he doesn't do that then it's like D Ray. I don't think D Ray Davis D Ray's not Everybody funny in be, any in any Everybody form. Trying to cop. The only person D I- Ray should be a, a dramatic actor because he's not funny. Yo, I want to see an all black Batman. All it makes black me cast it Batman. makes me appreciate Oh, you know there is a uh, there's a black Batman uh or he has a black sidekick in the new universe in but the if you, well, universe. What I'm saying is like so you know how the, this whole PC thing they're trying to Take series and like just change them. Who would oh. you cast as Batman if they're or a black Batman? Idris Elba. Nah. Nah. Old, no. Ben I mean, Affleck. Oh, plays you know what I want? Yeah. You know what I want? I want a uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor. I like him. I really like him as a as a as a he the dude that played Mordo or on uh on, he could, on, he, on uh, Doctor Strange. He could. Yeah. yeah he nah, could. Man, he could pull. He's not cool enough. Are you? You don't need to what? be cool. You don't Have need you not to be seen? cool. Bruce Bruce part of part of Batman. The dude stays in a cave most part of the time. Of Batman though Have is that he is seen? a rich playboy. He's not like, a can, Ben Affleck shows up in a fucking. Uh, David Yellow. Dope ass uh, Mercedes. What about the David Flash and like has these cool delivers cool lines. You can see the Flash playboy. Uh, Bruce Wayne in that Batman he's just stressed right Michael now. Michael B. Jordan yeah. is Batman. <laughs> oh, I don't see that. I'm cool with that actually. I'd I'd actually let that one like go. That. I'd I let like that, that one go. I would like that. Chadwick Boseman is Robin. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Now on top, bitch. <laughs> be golden. All right. Yeah. So who would you cast in as Poison Ivy? That's who we haven't seen on the screen yet. We need Poison Ivy on DC. That, that would be dope. Yeah. So a good. Oh, oh, oh. J- Jessica Chastain. That's all is my choice. The girl that played on uh, Insta- Instellar. What about Catwoman? I'll Taraji t- P. Henson. No. Oh, she has to be black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's oh, all, oh, yeah, it's oh, all okay. black. Yeah. So if I had a Catwoman, who am I going to put? Actually, I think Taraji P. Henson. Oh, no. Go with Taraji. Good in there. I, would, I would go with Taraji. Maybe. Mm-mm. I'll take a Megan Good. Megan Good could have to nah, be a side. Oh, you have to be nah. a good actress. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, let me tell Duh, you. you have to be a good actress, man. Yeah. What are you yeah, talking about? This is probably a quality movie. Yeah. yeah. Who should, who's a good black actress that's out Taraji right P. Now? Henson. Taraji. I, I, I hate her so, so much. What about Carrie, uh, Carrie Washington? Ooh. That would I would be nice. see her as Poison Ivy. Yeah, she'd be Poison Ivy is, like, yeah. more sultry. Yeah. And not so crazy. So she's, like, dangerous. and like Yeah. For sure. Carrie yeah. Washington, for sure, for that. Yeah. Especially if you think about her portrayal for like Olivia Pope. Right. That's her trial video right there. Yeah. I like that movie. Um, show. Well, before we move any further, this portion of the show is sponsored by us. The Sphere. <laughs> Are you starting your business and looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. I said that's so weird. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with your strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us at call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. Solid. Man, I um, just, I still think Batman Begins is probably one of the greatest Batman movies. For sure. Batman Begins or The Dark Knight? Batman Begins. The only reason why it was a good Batman movie because you felt like 
Because I went through his training. You saw how he was like, mm-hmm. kind of became like. It's one of the better origin stories for something for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that. Oh, shit. So while I'm thinking about it, before we go any further, because we've been on this for a minute, I saw. Um, sorry to bother you while we're talking about all black. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Holy shit. So. I know you can appreciate acid flicks, but um, this movie was totally, totally a fucking trip the whole time. Like, there's a lot of, like, weird scenes. Like, one of the things that like, was interesting about it to me was that, first of all, I liked the movie. It's very strange and to digest. <coughs> and didn't, I didn't realize what it was going to be about. And it's for sure commentary on capitalism, like extreme capitalism, and how it's kind of, like, bad or whatever. And you see it. I don't want to give away too much of the movie. I think y'all should definitely see it. Mm-hmm. Um but how like the white power base in power like kind of does a lot of corrupt shit and this one black guy's like um journey through going from being poor hipster type guy to being corporate america and all the crazy weird shit he's gonna see um but uh it was weird because like they'll drop him in to people's houses that he's on the phone with and they kept having this running bit where he had to have his white voice on the show to sell these uh, basically to assimilate in but they had weird monsters and shit in the movie so why didn't they put that on Netflix that seemed like it was a good straight to Netflix bro it has a like, nice five right now on Rotten right. Tomatoes dude that's fine yeah. I mean I mean I just think cause you're making a lot of money I mean I mean, just cause you're a good movie doesn't mean that you're gonna make a lot of money yeah. it's like you get oh, more exposure right if you, he's like I mean I'm dropping on Netflix I'm like hey no, yeah, but well, check that out I don't think so because on Netflix they uh, show you things based off of what you like so even though it might show like the new movies but they still they still Netflix still runs trailers on like national televised mm-hmm. TV and just like, yeah. hey, watch so this. before we even have it let's just see how much money it's brought in mm-hmm. see if there's even a debate when did it come out oh let's look at box office you about to look at it yeah I mean it looked like an interesting movie it just looked I just didn't never knew the concept of what was going on it was always just strange halfway you know? it doesn't dawn on you until about halfway through when he starts interacting with like the CEOs of the company they start flashing that it's Definitely commentary in like on extreme capitalism. Mm-hmm. Um, it also kind of reminded me of Idiocracy oh. a little bit, where they start showing you like these. It's got electric like some stuff about it. Like they're doing like there's a scene where like the guy does like uh, the g- the owner of the company. So all right, there's there part of what's going on is that you got this um, call center right. Everybody's these low level call employees. They're trying to get unions going. They're not making any money. Mm-hmm. And you got all these weird, grimy, greasy guys who's their managers trying to get them to, qu- to crack the whip and, and move on. Then he becomes a power broker or power caller. Gets up to the top floor. They got this golden elevator. They dress in suits all day. They only talk in their white voice and all this stuff. They got crazy. It's a extreme, super elitist at this point, right? Mm-hmm. But he's trying to change his personality to get there. But you start seeing all these random things start popping up, like the extravagance of what kind of life they live with all this money. And he starts interacting with these white people, like they're doing a bunch of cocaine all the time, like this party. <laughs> I'm talking about like there's a, it's about maybe if you stretch this line out, mm-hmm. about an eight, eight, eight inch line of cocaine. What? Yeah. But the guy, the thing is, is that while this is going on, one of the other companies that they highlight in this is, um, um, I can't remember the name of it, but basically it's an advertisement for you sign over the rest of your life to have shelter, food all day, and you work on this on, on making like on labor forces and all that, and you're uh, it's called no worry or f- uh, worry free. That's what it's called, worry free. Mm-hmm. And you're basically in a prison, and you're signing over yourself to a prison to give free work uh, labor to this capitalist machine. Wow. Yeah. So that's where the capitalist shit comes Six in. Six million dollars. That's how much. Mm, you maybe should have been on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Well, what's the budget though? Don't matter about that. No, it does. <laughs> it does matter. Netflix, <laughs> Netflix will. Netflix been dishing out major money. They just had it. What's the movie with Will yeah. Smith? Yeah. Uh, they advertised the, the shit out there. Okay. Movie. Well, yeah, hold on. Bright. Hold on. So right, yeah, there you go. But, all right. So here's the thing. Okay. So this mo- this movie had a limited release first because it's a low budget movie. Oh, throw it right on Netflix. Yeah. I always uh, say that these streaming pat- platforms you should take advantage of them because it's like for sure they're still them. getting paid. They're still getting Netflix still dish out money. Gave okay, what Adam Sandler like sixty million dollars. Shonda Rhimes. She hadn't even done anything on there yet. Yeah. I feel like though <laughs> they probably thought it was gonna do a whole lot better. By the way, the best part of this movie though is seeing Danny Glover curse so much. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. He drops I, MF so many times. Can I be a proponent of this? And I've always said, I think that we need a black streaming service. There's just one out there. And brown Sugar. Oh, it is? There's a couple. Yeah. One. That sounds but like I'm a talking about just like, I'm talking about this. It filters <laughs> in like all 
black media. So you'll have your black is yeah, on there. Brown sugar. Oh, it's all that on there? Yeah. Is this the one that has all the international movies too? Yeah. Like Queen okay. Sugar and all that good stuff? Yeah. Oh, well, well, this one that has like African movies and shit like Many that. They started they off with, with commercials with Rick Ross doing black exploitation stuff, but mm. they got like everything on there. I mean, it literally is. Man. It literally is the black Netflix. Black, black, black content is really out there, man. Some of it is, but I think some of it, like, no, I'm talking about just like you. I'm talking about just, and you can get it for like four ninety five a month. More diverse stories that are coming out of it. That's my one. because right now, at least from what I, all the black entertainment I've seen, it doesn't appeal to me of being a black male. Like, what's the except blackish does, grownish does. I like those, but. What's the is Issa Rae one? I hate that show. Insecure. I Insecure. Like I, hate I like that. that. I really like this show. I, I, I try to watch it the first season. Bring I it. I like that. It's a good show. Mm-hmm. Young like, kids. Yeah. I like a uh, Queen Sugar. Yeah. I like Star. Star is really good, man. Yeah. That show's killing it. See, that's what I'm talking about. I like Black Lightning. That show's fucking off the. Track. Oh yeah, Black Lightning is good. It's it's good black TV out there. You just gotta creep and find it. Nah, Luke Cage. More. Yeah. Okay. Luke Cage. Easily good. Luke Cage. First season until the eighth episode, and it turned the me off. The second season is way better than the first. Way season. And better. And I dislike the first mm-hmm. season. Yeah. They they kind of it, it. What I like about this season was it says okay we're looking at the first season. What did, can we grow from? What can mm-hmm. we learn from this? Let's keep the music. Let's get our acting up. The music Let's get the was story the to be best us. part. They yeah. had good story in, in there, but it's like it didn't feel. No one sold you on their role besides like Cottonmouth and yeah. Cottonmouth man. was the only person that sold me on his role, and then he was killed. I was like, I can't watch. See, it but this movie, yeah, yeah Bushmaster, Bushmaster. <laughs> Bush Master. Oh, Bush he Master killed it. it. Yeah, yeah Bushmaster was killing. Right. Okay, never mind. I didn't and realize look, that every, was him. And I love an, uh, and this I is, like him. And this just shows how good I love. I mean, this is how great I like to give my black people some credit. Mm-hmm. Every black person in Luke Cage that's on the Jamaican uh, thing, yeah, none of them speak <laughs> Jamaican. Jamaican. <laughs> and it blew none my mind when Jamaican. I found out. I was like, what? Not one. They sell you on that Not accent. one was Jamaican. It is, but a great, it is a good show, man. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it's just good. I will check it out yeah. this weekend. I just truly feel like black people have great talent. And I feel like We're look at Atlanta. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about even if you I look at the, the terrible shows. That. If you've been looking at terrible mm-hmm. shows, if you give them better scripts, I think you can do better. But you can't. We, well, the mayor the problem, got canceled. Though. Well, that's the problem, though. It is, is that better than like 75% of the shows what, on the yeah. We need more representation in okay. writers. That's true. And and but my thing is, is that a lot of the shows stick to the same tropes. So, like. Oh, I can agree. And that's what I'm saying is I'd like to see more diversity. Like, the reason why I like Blackest and Grownest, even. Um, what's that show with. Uh, Michael Carter, not Michael. The, um, oh, the uh, Carter. The, the Carters. Mm-hmm. I love that fucking show. Whatever it was called, the 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 Car- Carmichael's. Michaels. Car- Michaels. Yeah. They canceled that show. No, he quit. He stopped because he didn't want to do it anymore. Oh. But even his his stand up is fucking hilarious too. But more stuff like that where it's like they do it with regular ass shit every day. I don't want to see the same thing. I was like, oh, like the, the problem with Insecure is that. It doesn't speak to me as a viewer, and it's just what it is. It's like it's just, I think she's just great writing. I think everybody on there acts well. I, don't, I couldn't t- take away from the acting, but, but it's the, the the subject matter. But that's the thing. That's it's, it's the thing I like about these shows is because they challenge your mindset as a male to think and try to understand the female psyche more. And that's why I think. These but shows I'm like are, I'm not like sexist. I'm not trying to be uh-huh. like I'm not trying to be a female. But I was like oh, okay, well I can understand why you know try to understand them more. But you can do that. And not have it be every single episode. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it's fine to have that is what the main motivation is, but sometimes you can With tell Entourage. a different perspective in the show. I wouldn't even Entourage, Entourage was the Entourage. same thing. Yeah, I love Entourage. <laughs> that, yeah. Entourage got boring to me because it was you, literally the same. The same episode. show every well, every week. About, like, about Atlanta, there's a there's a message for it, but they changed. The okay, so what tell me what you thought about the second season of Atlanta. I've only watched one episode of it. I'm waiting to, to do it, 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 it. I know Cat Williams is on it, though. He plays some guy with a cat with crocodile. Yeah, yeah that was the, in the mm-hmm. Fl- Florida Man episode. I didn't like, mm-hmm. Okay, at first, my problem with Atlanta is one thing is I wish they would I wish they would focus more on music side, and I want to see more of Paperboy. They maybe do that in the third season mm-hmm. or whatnot. But I did like this season after it wrapped up, and then I thought about it on what Mobbing or Robin season was and the yeah. theme of it. I was like, oh, okay, it kind of makes sense. And it, and it kind of... It made me look at it differently than what I was when I first was watching mm-hmm. it. Like, they have this episode where they're going to go see Drake or whatever. And I'm yeah. like, what's going on here? But it plays on the tropes of, and that's why I like Insecure. And mm-hmm. that's what I like about. Uh, now I got a comment for you. Go ahead, finish. finish well, that's up. the thing I like about Insecure is because they type, they talk, or they like Grownish. They talk about. That's what I was going to bring up, though. They so, talk about. Go ahead, go. go they up. talk, okay, so they talk about the, the, 
the, the, the relationship side of life and the right. relationship side of trying to understand each other better. Same with Queen Sugar, if you ever watch it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about it. Now, Insecure kind of takes it to the, they push the limit to be more, I mean, for the younger audience or whatnot. I think Grownish does a better job because, all right, so your point was that Insecure makes you think of it from the female's perspective. Well, Grownish is all about her perspective that going through this. Insecure, on the other hand, is that it's her female perspective and what she goes through and all this. And the thing is, is like even if you look at the females that are on there, they're different types, so they would have different experiences and different views on what's going on. And my thing is just that even like take for instance that shit where it was like her and her dude were about to break up and then they did break up and they were staying in the house and he went and had sex with that other chick and all that and mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh he's wrong for this and that and the other. It was like it's not he's not wrong. They were broken up. Like mm -hmm. whatever like she mm -hmm. did run around did the same thing. But it was like a particular set of female views that the show was feeding you, and that was it. And that was my thing. I was like, I don't, I can't vibe with that because I don't even agree with this first and foremost. The subject matter, the peripheral subject matter, I'm all down for that. All the other storylines, cool. But her particular view, I'm like, this ain't for me. I don't really care it about watching it. towards women. I can understand what you're saying. But Gronish, though, that shows. it's her, it's a female's perspective of what's and going on in the card and how to interact with it. And I'm like, this is cool because it doesn't just dwell on just her experience it's her experience and then relationship with other people around her and then sometimes they shift a little bit more to other people in the show and that's what that's a I more like real, show. well rounded show I, 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 I do like that show shows. way better yeah. I do like that show better than Insecure but I still mm -hmm. appreciate it But it's I like, appreciate what it is I'm just not a, it's just not for me I love that we're finally moving into a time where people are not looking at the actor or the actress anymore they're more looking like they look right. at the role or what you're trying to sell like Johnny Depp and all them like you throw them in the movie they used to just sell out now it's like okay no give yeah. me a little bit more than just your face and your celebrity name exactly so I do enjoy that giving the black actress the role of actresses yeah um, I will give her this and her writing, she's very talented for Ooh, sure. Right? Yeah, oh, her writing, yeah, yeah. And I like it more. So, I like it. What, what's your opinion on um, Tiffany Haddish? <sighs> she's oversaturated, like Kevin yeah, she's, she's not, out there much, a little bit much. Her style of comedy is not. It's very much. It's like very forceful. Clown. It's very immature, and it's, it's like clown. Uh, it's like how Kevin Hart is. It's very mm -hmm. clown. -like, a clown. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you laugh was, at them. I did enjoy her on uh, what's that movie? Girls Trip. She was okay in that movie. Yeah, I like that movie. Was great. I think she she annoyed the shit in me out of me. I, I just think black people were, they rally behind one thing and they kind of just push it to the max. And, and see, and I think that's, that's part of the hate. problem though is that's that we're hate. not. So in the same way that we're critiquing like oh this movie this 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 and this we don't give the same kind of criticism to our own stuff and I think that that allows a lot of bullshit to get we through. should because we like should. Black pa even with Black Panther Black Panther was a solid movie and and like, oh it's the best person. Marvel movie it's not the no, best it's not Marvel. the best it's Marvel like movie. top 10, 15 ish, ish. Yeah. 10 for sure there's only what 16 but I like what you said we don't criticize our own work we yeah. criticize everything else but not our own I mean, and if you don't like, and if you criticize it then all of a sudden you don't like you're it. Like, that's not true that this just sucks but you like, know I think that comes like though from the point that we get criticized on practically everything that's every true. day we don't that we we kind of hold back on criticizing our own because we know so we the road that we have to harder on the other shit yeah I mean, basically, like you yeah. can't like. And that's my thing is like you can't. We sh uh, sorry, we can't. You shouldn't, in my opinion, let bullshit slide just because other people criticize you. Should just call out more bullshit. That yeah. is true. Like, I like just, how you said. Like, that. don't release. Don't don't loosen your criteria for something being good. And I was like. I mean, Black Panther is the best example of that. It's like, oh well, this that. And they're like, no, there's plot holes in it though. There is like the there. CGI wasn't the best. Uh, um, Killmonger, they fucked his story up. Black Panther was boring. Like, he was a boring character for that, and whatever. But and it's the same thing with like um, it was a Creed typical Marvel. was okay. It was a typical Marvel movie, exactly. Mm -hmm. But the, the character development just wasn't there. My favorite character in that whole movie was fucking Mbaku. You said Creed was okay. I love it. Was Creed. Okay. I yeah, Creed, Creed was okay. Yeah, Creed was cool. Yeah, it's okay. Like I, I'm more excited. Mbaku about Creed was kind of. <laughs> Yeah, he was the best part. Of the I want him. It's challenge time. day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everybody's his person own father. <laughs> I was like, he Damn, sounds, bro. He sounds like uh, he sounded like Bane. Yeah, he, yeah, did. he, did. Yeah, he, he did. did. He did. But that was like he. I could believe him being like the the, the arch rival in this whole thing, and I would I actually preferred him. And if he played Black Panther, I'm like, yo, that's how I'd picture Black Panther to be. Maybe tone back some of the arrogance. Ooh. 
Umbaku. Nah, man. Umbaku is big. He's big Umbaku, and, and hold on, hold on. Didn't take shit from Umbaku anybody. is the perfect man ape if they did it correct. He would mm-hmm. be the great foil to Black Panther. Yeah. Chadwick Boseman. The only some reason of his why character traits imparted onto Black Panther because Black Panther seemed a little too like way way too unsure of himself. But then the Black Panther now. But he has not mentioned. been the Black. Panther. See, and he that's has. the thing. Okay, so hey, wait, let me ask you this. Okay, and this is a major pothole in this movie. If the Black Panther has to be king of Wakanda, and it, that's how he gets the heart shaped herb, how when his father was alive, he Plot was hole. hold on, it was Plot America, hole. and already knew how to use the suit. Plot hole. How did the suit fit him? That is the yeah. plot he hole of all, the whole story. So we can only assume that he'd already been Black Panther at that point. And I hate, and that's what I hate that they that they made this movie kind of itself, but it kind of ignored kind of how the kind of what they laid the groundwork in mm-hmm. the Civil mm-hmm. War. I still think he did the best portrayal in Civil War than he did in, yes. in Black Panther because he wasn't even a star in his own movie, which I hated. In Civil War, I was so pumped to see him because he was interesting. Like, he, but he also had more traits like Mbaku that where he was like, "No, I'm going to like you find him, I'm going to kill him." Yes, like, he, he wasn't, wasn't as slick. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't as yeah. slick as he was in Civil War. In Civil yeah. War, he was a slick dude, man. I was like, especially when he had the like, I don't really care like and personality. That, and that's the I like part. That. Th- that movie happened. He did not do that like, Black Panther a few weeks after that. That's all true. of a sudden, now he's meek and unsure of himself and all that's this. True. But dog, you just went across the country to go kill somebody that killed your father. Like that is true. You're more cocky than that. We should sure. criticize our own, but it, it, I can understand what what both of y'all are saying because it's like we don't have enough of our stuff. So why criticize stuff that we do have? But right. it's like there's a lot of stuff that we have. Like from we hype up a lot of the BS, like love mm-hmm. and hip hop and all that. We should yeah, hype it up. I can't. I, all right, guilty pleasure of mine. Watch like Black Ink Crew. But I hate seeing that kind of I stuff. I hate seeing us. I like can't that. stand watching any type of reality TV. But we like it. We like it so much. I, I mean, so unless it's, it's like unless it's like it. one of them contest deals where you know my wife watches where they're baking cakes and stuff. I sit up and watch that every now and then yeah. with her. Or History Channel has a show, uh, Forged in Fire, where they they're literally on there making knives mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. swords and stuff. And so I will watch that. But outside of that, I don't watch any reality yeah, we can do TV. Way better. We can do way better. There's some, some shows out there that I feel. Should I mean, you got to think about it. We got Donald Trump because of a reality Ignorance. TV show. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. And yeah. If he hadn't been on a reality TV show, he'd still be doing real estate. Hey, man, that was a good show, too. I enjoyed that first season. I enjoyed that first season of The Apprentice. But that was uh, some good drama going on. <laughs> So we got, we got to shout out our last sponsor out here. We're actually nearing the end of the show. Uh, this portion of the show is sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empowerment movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside of their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at KOGpassion.com. That's KOGpassion.com. And use coupon code DOPE for 10% off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness apparel. Act now. Sizes are selling out fast. Well, I pulled that photo of Aquaman. I wish they really bring bring Aqualad into the fold. Well, we gotta first get Aquaman in this thing. I mean, yeah. forget him. It's it's all blackness in this right now, man. It's talking about <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> that uh, looks dope, man. Yeah, yeah, so they got some more photos out of this. Like, and these look way better than the Shazam photos. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck they're gonna be. I don't know. Uh, that's a. Uh, uh, they said it was. Man, I forgot that guy's name. He's playing the wizard and Diamond. What's this? The guy that was messing with uh, Kamora Simmons, that dude. He was with her. Diamond who's Him. He's playing in Aquaman and he's playing in uh, the wizard in Shazam. That meme's That's funny. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Like if if uh, Jason Momoa doesn't drive, ride a giant seahorse, I'm going to be disappointed. And we've got pictures of him on a giant dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Show that shit. It look, at first I thought it had, it had legs on there, but it definitely doesn't. But... There we go. Can you blow that, that up? It's dope to me, man. It just looks like some shit. It's got legs on there. That's what I said, right? Or is it on a rock? It looks dope, man. But it definitely has legs. It has. It's, it's perched got on legs. something. I like Jason. I like uh, Justin Lin, man. I like his horror movies. Who? He's the director of the film. Oh, you said fucked up Jason Momoa. No, Justin. Bro, Lee. this this can't be real though. No, that's it a is. dragon. That's, no, that was that's, that's a from, dragon, right? That's, that's a dragon. Yeah, that's from Entertainment Weekly. Doesn't mean like they can control. Instead of drag, uh, no, dude, that's from Elite Daily, dude. No, it's not. It's from Entertainment. Look, that no, says Elite Daily, is, right? But there. no, the photo is from from the website. It's a copy oh yeah, movie. from Entertainment right, Magazine. Yeah. Oh my God. They dr- they dropped a whole bunch of photos for it because Comic Con is this weekend. Oh. They're gonna have a trailer. Hey, that Aquaman trailer is gonna drop and it's gonna be it's awesome. Going Kevin Smith's got a new show out. It actually a pilot. He's trying to get people to crowdsource it, but uh, it's called Hollyweed. 
Mm-hmm. It's him and uh, the uh, I can't remember his name. He played Ashy Larry. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They I just saw him. On they own a weed. They w- they own a dispensary, and <laughs> the first episode, the pilot was actually pretty cool. Darnell. Yeah. Darnell something. I, just, I can't think of his last name. But yeah, they they run a dispensary, and it's actually. I've been wanting to see cool. him on a show. I like Kevin Smith, man. He's he's. He's the best thing about that new Drake video. I'm glad he's still alive. That Drake video is hilarious. Man, I'm just like, what do you mean man, alive? dude Dog. had a massive heart attack, Lord. Well, if you see him now, you might not recognize him too much. much weight. Yeah, dude lost at least sixty pounds. He lost a lot of weight. That's good. Yeah. Man, I just, I mean, I don't know, man. It's comic book movies. I, I just hope DC gets it right. Yeah, well, we've been. Has, know, they man. have the stories. We've been hoping that I for a while. DC picture, has man. these stories. If you grew up a comic book reader, DC has the stories. I never yeah. was, like when I was a kid. I never really was a Marvel fan. Like all my shit. Was I like think DC, DC would have a good shot at it if they got the studios out the way and let them just make movies. They had yeah. let the creators create. Yeah, I and mean, the then if you did that, because that, that's one thing about Marvel. Um, Kevin Feig or Feig or whatever, Feige. He understands. Mm-hmm. Okay, these guys are making the movies, and it's based off the stuff that we wrote mm-hmm. at Marvel. I'm gonna let them do what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they, they interfere and he stays bit, out the way. Yeah. You know, roughly he stays out the way. He just shells out the money because they've seen, but they see they what seen happens the right there. Iron Man two, yeah. yeah, Iron Man three, Thor. But that's what I'm saying. I, I always said that DC should always do it like. They have their solo films, and you have their, you understand the character more, and then focus on the villains because that's the best thing about DC is their D- villains. always been the best or thing about do, DC. Or you can do like a more of a character centric movie and have them come together for Justice League and fight Dark Side or somebody big, and then yeah. they do their solo ob- movies. Uh, like objectively has the best villains. Who DC? Yeah, they have just more fish. I mean, because I'm gonna say Batman was always my favorite comic book character, but my favorite overall character was the Joker. Yeah, yeah, that dude's that dude's awesome. Always. <coughs> Mine Joker, was Blackface. I like Luther. Jason Todd. Ooh, that Teen Titans uh, show is gonna come out. Teen oh, Titans. That sounds, oh, okay. in, that sounds interesting. Are you gonna see that uh, Teen Titans Go movie? No. I, it has, what's I love the the cartoon. It's actually funny as shit. The movie looks funny too. Like I, I, I sometimes I sit up and I'm like, this is the too guy much who plays shirt. Lego Batman is playing Slade. Oh, really? Uh, Will Arnett. Will yeah. Arnett. That dude's amazing. Uh, Second best him. Batman. Yo, yeah. he, <laughs> he could play um, a villain in DC. I yeah, like he could. Play, uh, I like Army Hammer. I wish he plays him. Um, he's in. Uh, Sorry to bother you. Yeah, man. He was. He yeah. was. He was supposed he to play Batman. The, he back plays the, the villain in Sorry to bother you. Yeah. He's wild. He, so he wears a dress who, in part of the movie. Who else going to check out Mission Impossible? I am. Yeah, see it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see it next Monday. Christopher McQuarrie, man, I heard he was in talks to do Man of Steel, and he was just like, I, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Because he was like, the fanboys, the fan people are just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm going to check out The Equalizer while I'm at it, too. Did you like the first one? It was okay. It was okay. I think this <coughs> one. We, th- we did talk about this, actually. Yeah. <laughs> when I said I hated Liam Neeson. Yeah. It's like I've seen it done. I've seen it done already. It's just, you can't, there's no way. I've seen Jason Bourne. He's going to kill six people. At his age, mm-hmm. in thirty seconds. Yeah, but we watched li- Liam Neeson do it, so and that was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I watched <laughs> yeah. the first one. And I was like, "Yo, he's too old for this." Like, he was, but he. he but he, I, I don't know. He wasn't. He wasn't just like because we all remember that one uncle that dad was like faster than everybody and thought he, he was. Like Liam so you know, but Denzel. Doesn't. But also, you know? he would be sitting down or something, and you came to bother him. Yeah, and he would attack from a deep. No, I position. had I had one uncle who did because he was ex army. Mm-hmm. He didn't my cousin Tony's like he that, but he was smell. like in his thirties and forties. Like he one time, I shit you not, picked my brother up in a wedgie and ripped his fucking. That's why girl. they should have. That's why they should have <laughs> an equalizer with uh, what's his name from uh, Michael from, Jordan? Nah, from uh, the, the white dude, the white <laughs> the dude rock. from uh, what you call it? <laughs> Yo, from Avatar. Man. Oh shit! Speaking of the rock, uh, the ball, hey ballers! Shout out to that awesome show that the Rock is on. Right. That show's dope, but there are some another rocks. good black show. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Sky. It's really just Entourage all it over It is Entourage again. all it's over It's so much better, though, in my opinion. No, man. Entourage has some No, crazy. I got to agree with him. Ballers is better than Entourage. Mm, I got to watch it. Entourage <laughs> was good when it came out, but again. It, it aged badly. The, it aged the, badly because it got really sexy. Like really yeah, sexy. and but really the bad. thing about it was. Is Aria was my favorite You part. had seen that like, story each week. Yeah. yeah. It's the, the same thing, the same format. I think Ari was, was the one that kind of. Him and Turtle were the two people that was like, okay, I'll enjoy drama. I did like yeah, 
too that much of a strange. too much of a of a crybaby. And then oh boy, who played um, Victory? Vinny James. Victory. Yeah, I I couldn't stand him. <laughs> uh, I was Vinny like, James. what? Yeah, Vinny. Like he's not even like he really. But you know is not the cool, the way right? they wrote the oh, you story. Oh, Aquaman. <laughs> you mean play Aquaman exactly. that first season? Yeah, yeah he did. Aquaman. That's that funny. Movie. And Medellin, you remember yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> he got a on his that back. Yeah. That that was a fucking train wreck. Yeah. That was the most meta thing about that show. That I thought was hilarious. Is like they didn't filming a shit movie. Yeah, but they actually uh, did a fake documentary on that yeah. and aired it on HBO. What was it with, uh, what's this guy, uh, what's the dude that did Avatar? James Cameron directed that movie in the show. I'm like, what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. I'm yeah. like, what? This is great. That's why I thought it was See, they had, like, the they features. Have some, they had some elements that were like the features that. features was But awesome. also, so does um, that shit with Don Cheadle, House of Lies. House like of Lies, show. yeah. When he gave Matt Damon that hand job. That was like, well, it's a bit far. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't see the episode. I'm glad I didn't either. They don't show it, but he says, all right, bro. All right. If we want to make this deal, man, you got to jack me the off. The episode... <laughs> Of Entourage with Matt Damon on it was probably one of the oh, funniest. Oh, when he kept telling the donate, yeah, <laughs> the water one? that yeah, was, was like, funny. You need to donate to this. Yeah, he never reminded. I was like, yeah, he did the same fucking thing though in uh, House of Lies though. Yeah, he was trying to have him donate then too. And he yeah, was on the set with the people who was like, that's the great thing. <laughs> yeah, funny. that's the great thing about that's the only thing I like about Entourage was it was the features. It was like the, it was it was the, it the was. cameos that they had that, that the running gag exactly. Which is why by. yeah, this is why Ballers is a better show because it doesn't. Rely on having to have a gimmick, and right, that, that's right. that's like it's okay to see ballers a standalone. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that was nice scene. Yeah, they have features with the, yeah. the Sean Watson or somebody walk across there. Yeah, and oh boy, the uh, Rock and the White dude, whatever his name is. Oh, the little ball guy, uh, yeah, Rob Cardry. Rob funny. Cardry. Have yeah. you ever seen um, California Cation? Yes. Yeah. All right, who's a better who's a better bald white guy? Oh boy, who plays the agent on that? Runkle, Charlie Runkle. Yeah, Charlie Runkle or uh, The Rocks. Who's I better? gotta get to The Rocks, man. <laughs> no, Charlie Runkle. Oh, oh, no, hands man. down, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie Runkle. Runkle. <laughs> Charlie Runkle. It was that scene where he caught him watching gay porn. <laughs> 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 like, nah, I, I thought no, it was you remember something. when they had him on 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 camera uh, masturbating? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He was way more extreme. Like, like this dude, like, yeah. Runkle. He wasn't as extreme. I mean, yeah. as extreme. What are you talking I'm about? Talking about? Now I'm talking about the dude in uh, Ballers. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he's, he's not as extreme. Be, but he's not as extreme. Yeah, as he's not. Like, he's and not. Runkle, Runkle isn't, like, loud and crazy like that. He's just fucking out there. He just yeah. don't care. Dude, my favorite character on TV right now, though, is Mike Wagner. Wags. From uh, oh, bro, yeah. Billions. Wags is by far. You watch Billions? Dude, I haven't, I haven't watched Billions. You got to watch Billions. I watched the first two seasons, but I haven't watched third season. You got to w- just go back and watch everything I and, and who pay it. Wags? But who's Wags? He's, uh, he's like Bobby Axelrod's right hand man. Yeah. Oh, the dude that comes in. The, like, dude, like the, uh, the, I would like to see an episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would yeah, like crazy. to see an episode of, of him, him by himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just a like, day in the life of Wags. I saw, um, one of the episodes from the last season, I just started watching that last season, and he did something. Oh, when he was trying to stop her from getting, like, the account information. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I thought, I thought you were giving me a wink. He's like, did I physically wink at you? He was like, well, I didn't. Based off what you said, I thought you were winking at me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you yeah. <laughs> you lay off the quaaludes. Man. Yeah. But, yo. Yeah, this and is Wags, is, show? Oh, go ahead, Wags is easily that guy who will get Absolutely. up and do all the quaaludes. He can play Penguin. Yeah. Yeah, he could. He could play Penguin. David what about Costable. the guy from uh, Br- uh, not Breaking Bad? Uh, yeah, Better Call Saul. I like that dude. Oh yeah, he's yeah, funny. Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah. Who I would see him playing. He's awesome, man. He's a good yeah. guy. Man, TV is awesome, man. TV's, dude, TV's back with dude, this new season of Better, Better Call Saul is, is gonna be off the chain because now we're getting it. into Breaking, breaking Bad. bad the, this yeah. season is gonna be deep into Breaking Bad. Before we go, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm always gonna say I know this is a movie, but man, TV is usurping. We talk about movies. TV on it. Yes, well, TV is usurping movies. It is. Sure. It right. is yeah, because they, 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 they more care more about the yeah. characters and stories instead of lens flare. And Netflix and Hulu are winning right now. Two shows that people should always should go back and watch. Mine Hunter on Netflix. Yes. And uh, the Night of on HBO. Yes. Those My two would be Goliath and Bosch on Amazon. Yeah, you were telling me about Goliath. Was good. Goliath I mean, is great. I mean, you see Billy, Billy Bob, Bob Thornton Billy Bob playing Bob a lawyer, and it is, he's just dead on. I love him in uh, Fargo. Oh well, you would love him in okay, Goliath. I'm Goliath telling you. Now, yeah, you would love him. Cool, cool. So shout out y'all's 
podcast. Fish Tell me where they can find you one more time. Fish and grits, man. And we're gonna get out of here. Never yeah. forget that uh, Billy Bob Thornton used to smash Angelina Jolie, man. True, 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 crazy, true. Yes, Billy Mo. Yeah, <laughs> before the war show, yeah. I was like, y'all be if, wild. Uh, yeah. Wild man, wild times we live. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that'll do it, folks. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next Wednesday. At Sunday. Yep. As always, subscribe to the channel. Drop us a line. Drop us a comment. Drop us a review. Howard Jerome on Facebook. Howard underscore Jerome. Send on food. Instagram. Send food. Cause I'm always hungry. And so Send are these food guys. And money. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for being on the show. You don't get any beer. You're underage. I'm not cool. yeah. contributing to the delinquency of a minor. You're going to be my new neighbor. Ain't that something? I am. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Party. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. shout that out to you. I better be off air because, nah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll catch you guys next week. Yep. Thanks. <laughs>